Info Music, praise God. I, uh, last Sabbath, I talked about how I gave my two socks away. <laughs> and uh, for God's glory, and someone gave me a bouquet of two socks from uh, Homeless Ministry. So, uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very creative, don't you think? See what happens when you give? You receive. God bless us. So praise the Lord for that. We're going to start a series um, on the new, on the Ten Commandments, but from the New Testament. It's interesting because uh, many folks today teach and believe, not all, but there's some, even some Christians teach and believe that the Ten Commandments are done away with. Yet, they were still written by the finger of God. Yet, when they were broken by Moses and he made the people drink it when he crushed it into powder, he had to go back to the mountain and God again had to write it with his own finger. And yet today some people think that they have the authority to move the finger of God and do away with his Ten Commandments. In fact, you know, I was serving in the South and um, there was a push to remove the Ten Commandments from um, the courthouses. Now realizing that most of the laws that we have in America actually come from the very Ten Commandments that they're trying to push away. Now, before I go on and I pray, I just want you to know, imagine if there was no laws on the way to church. I could drive as fast as I walk. I can go through any stop sign. I don't have to stop at any red light. I can do whatever I want. No laws, right? And uh, would there be chaos? God gives us laws intentionally to make sure that our lives follow a pattern and that pattern is one that will praise and glorify his holy name let's begin with prayer dear father as we look at the series now starting this new year please father use me so that the work can clearly be expounded but also lord if i forgot to put anything before you at the foot of the cross please take it once again Guide us now as we open up your Bible and see truly what the Word says. We ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you don't have a Bible, just raise your hand. One of the deacons will give you a Bible. Not give it to you, but at least lend it to you. Um, this is very important that, um, that you have a Bible. Because um, everything we're going to be teaching today is from the Word. Please put up your hands if you need a Bible. Okay, my sister over here, motion. Did you raise your hand? No, I got Okay, you got it. And if you need a Bible, just raise it, please, and we'll provide a Bible for you. In the scripture reading, we have a man who came to Jesus, and he asked, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? But the truth of the matter, only Christ can give us life. And so he begins to quote the Ten Commandments that we have. But then Jesus turns around, and he says something to him that startled and some folks today have a misunderstanding of what the, the text really says but he said unto him yet lack is not one thing sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasures in heaven and this is when he heard this he was very sorrowful for he was very rich you see what he didn't realize was that he was breaking one of the commandments for him his treasures was his God his money became his God. And, and what, what you need to understand is in today's society, anything can become your God. And we need to be very, very careful because um, one of the things, for instance, sports folks, the way people talk about them and, and, and have the statistics, and when you go to the stadiums, they're more shout louder than anything else, and they're more excited than church. But you see, they treat them as gods, and but these gods fade away. But today, many of our young people treat these folks as gods. 
Then you have American Idol where the people sing and, all, and you hear the guys, ah, and they go, ah, you know. And they get all excited and everything and they treat them as God. And then if they come to, to, to we have Christian singers, they, they come to the church and, and before they can just sit down and worship, they want the autograph. And I had to deal with that in the past. I said, listen, after church, and then we have these little things, um, they, they call like little cards, I've seen them, where they have these preachers, and, and God forbid if that preacher shakes your hand. <laughs> because they, they glorify the, the speakers. I need you to understand something. Anything that you put before God in your life that takes the place of God, is become your new God. And what the man didn't realize was that God was trying to tell him, Jesus was trying to explain to him that your riches has become your God. Now some people think of God just as an idol, God as this and that. Anything can become your God. Anything. And so the man walked away not realizing that his riches took the place of God. And you know the story of the barn maker that he said, man, God has really blessed me and I'm going to build big, bigger barns and, and it's I, I, I and all these I, I, I things and God says, thou fool, tonight I will take thy soul away and then what's going to happen to all these riches? Anything you put in front of God becomes your new God. And so today we have many young people, many old people, many people that do such a thing. Now let's go to the book of, uh, yeah, even these things can become God. Sometimes people spend more time in these games than they do in reading the Word of God. So let's go to the book of Acts chapter 12, the New Testament now, because something happened in the New Testament that relates to one of the commandments that some people say we're done away with. So let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 12, and there is Herod the king, supposed to be the king of the Jews, which was really Jesus Christ. But in Acts chapter 12, beginning with verse 21, the word of God says this, And, and upon a set day Herod, arrayed in his royal apparel, set upon his throne, and I want you to know it was gorgeous, it was beautiful, and made an adoration unto them, so he spoke to them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of God and not of man. Now I want you to know something. The devil does the same thing. He wants all the accolades as if he's God. But rather than giving the credit to God, he said, No, 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 I am not God. I'm just a representative. He kept taking all the accolations. And he kept taking it in. It is not the voice of man, but the voice of God. And in verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord smoked him because he gave not God the glory. And it was eating the worms and he gave up the ghost. So here in the New Testament, you already have a situation where he broke the commandments of God. And so if the commandments of God did not exist in the New Testament, why did the angel come and smite him? Because he broke commandment number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. In the Old Testament, let's go to the book of Daniel. In fact, I want you to know right now we're going through the study of Daniel. It is an incredible study. If you don't have a Sabbath school lesson, make sure you see uh, some of the folks outside to make sure that you get a Sabbath school lesson on the book of Daniel. But in Daniel chapter 4, the fourth chapter, God had already warned the king not to pride in yourself. And he gave him a dream. And God gave him the, explain the vision. But here, let's start with verse 29. And at the end of 12 months, this is after God told him, be careful. After 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the king spake and said, it is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might and my power. Sounds like Lucifer when he sinned against God. And for the honor of my majesty, and while the word was yet in the king's mouth, verse 31, a voice from heaven said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee is spoken, thy kingdom is departed from thee. And the Bible tells us he turned into an animal. And after seven years, verse 34, praise the Lord, he finally woke up. And at the end of the days, 
And Nebuchadnezzar lifted up my eyes into heaven, and understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And so you hear you have two kings that try to take the title of God. And God dealt with them, each of them. Now don't think that the Ten Commandments don't exist today. Because the other king happened after Christ rose from the dead. And it still applies today. Now for those that don't know, the Ten Commandments exist in two places. Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy 5. And this is from Deuteronomy. Um, even though it says Exodus up there. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the judgments which I speak into your ears this day, that ye may learn and keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, and the Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. And the Lord talked with you face to face in the mount of the midst of the fire. And I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For you were afraid by reason of the fire and went not into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Now some people say that this doesn't apply today. Oh yes, it does. It applies very clearly. Can I make a car my God? Yes or no? And I'll tell you one thing, some people take better, better care of their cars than they do with their spouses. Can I make a sweater my God? Oh yeah. Can I make my occupation my God? Oh yeah. If you spend more time with something and you love something more than God, that becomes your God. Let's see what else the Bible teaches. Some teach that the Ten Commandments were done away with, but what does the Bible teach? Okay, so in Matthew 5, from the words of Jesus Christ himself, the first book of the New Testament, the first gospel, Matthew chapter 5. And like I said, I want you to see from your own Bible. Because I don't want you to say, well, the pastor said, no, 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 no. I read it from his word. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 17, the Bible itself says this. Think not that it come to destroy the law or do away with it, or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away. Has heaven and earth passed away yet? No. Not one jot or one tittle. Now what is that? In today's, see it as a, as a, a comma or, you, you know the little dot on top of the eye? In modern contextualization, see like that. Not even the little dot is to be removed. And no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever shall do it and teach them. So in other words, we're not just to talk about it, we're to follow Christ and his commandments, the same shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. And it makes your question, is Jesus doing away with the commandments? No. Just the opposite. He's saying, fulfill it. But yet some people still believe that Christ has done away with the laws, and they say, well, um, let me ask you a question. Did the law exist before Moses? Can you prove it to me? Yes. Well, we're going to look at it right now. Because if they didn't say the Lord was done away with Moses, then what about all that happened before Moses? Well, let's go to Genesis chapter 4. 
Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to be going through the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4. This is why I want you to read it from your own Bible. In Genesis chapter 4, God is talking to Cain, and Cain was someone that wanted to do things his way, not God's way. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? He was angry because, you see, a sheep was required for the sin offering. But he said, no, no, I don't want to do that. I want to give you fruits. And why is that wroth? Why is that continent fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So in other words... The, the God used the word sin. Now let me ask you a question. What is sin? So if there's no law, can there be sin? No. But he says that sin lies at your door. So the Bible is very clear also. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 it says, Sin is a transgression of what? The law. So he's telling Cain that if you keep going the way you're going to keep going. You're going to sin. In other words, you're going to break a law. Now, right now, we don't know exactly what the law is, but it's right there in the beginning of Genesis. Yes or no? Okay, and also, in Romans 3.20, it says, For by the law is the knowledge of what? Sin. So, because there's a law, we know that if we go against the law, we sin against God. So, right in the very beginning, a law already exists. We don't know quite yet, but we get in there. So let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, was there sin yet? No, there was not sin yet. God just finished creating Adam and Eve. And so in the very beginning, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because that in it, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So the Sabbath was created right from the beginning. Yes or no? Okay. Is that part of the Ten Commandments today? Okay. But it existed before. Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Now what about thou shalt not kill? Kill. Okay. And this... Uh, let me turn here one second. Turn to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. I'm just going to go right to the beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Now the story, Cain killed Abel. And beginning with verse 9, chapter 4, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I am not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed. Now I want you to understand, there's a penalty. Usually if you sin, there's a penalty. From the earth which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So right away, God is saying, because you committed a sin, you're going to be cursed. There's a penalty for breaking the law. And then in Genesis, here we go, Genesis chapter 4, um, for their brother's hand. And then in Genesis 9, verse 6, and notice all this is in Genesis, before we get to Moses, whoso shed a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God may he man. So in other words, there's a penalty for breaking the law. Right there in Genesis, before the Ten Commandments are formed. Let's go to Genesis 9. Now all this is in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 and 20 to 25. In Genesis chapter 9, beginning verse 20. Now, I, I know that I'm going to do this slowly, but it's very important that we understand. So after the flood, and Noah, and Noah began to be a husbandman, in other words, a farmer, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunk, and he was uncovered, Within his tent. That's why, guys, you can't drink because when you drink, you don't know what you're doing. And then Ham, who was a Ham, 
the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father, and he told his two brethren, and his brothers went out. And Shem and, and, and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon their shoulders, and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their dad. And their faces were backwards, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And when Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be upon his brother. Again, he's not cursed for breaking the law. And what is that law? Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the fifth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother, and all, that the days may be long upon all the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, in the Testament, in the Old Testament, you already see the Ten Commandments. So when people say that, that, that the Ten Commandments began with Moses, that is not true. It started long before, thousands of years before. What God did upon Mount Sinai was codified and put it together so that we have something clearly to follow. So, let's go to Genesis 12. And again, I'm going through just the book of Genesis clearly. Genesis chapter 12. Now, if you notice I'm going, as we go along, Genesis chapter 12. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse thee, and all, the, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, in the beginning, God begins uh, a foundation to follow. Now, here's the problem. When you get to verse 5, and Abraham took Sarah's wife, and not his brother, and went. And Abraham passed through the place of Shechem, verse 6, and verse 7. In fact, basically, here's what I want to, I want to share with you. In verse 10, and there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there for the for the famine of the grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to Egypt that he took his wife Sarah. And behold, I says, I know that thou art fair and a woman to look upon. In other words, you're gorgeous and you're beautiful. But therefore, if it comes to pass that the Egyptians shall see thee, say that you're not my wife, because they will kill me. In verse 11, but Sarah prayed thee that thou art my sister. Now, was that a half truth? It was a half truth. But a half truth is still a half a lie, which is still a lie. That it may be well with me, for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee. In those days, what happened was if someone saw someone beautiful, they would invite them to the house, and then all of a sudden the husband would drink some wine or some water, next thing you know, he died in the house. You know what happened. It was poison. And he says, well, because you're in my house, now i got to take care of you. So now you become my wife. So he thought, because she's so beautiful, so gorgeous, and now they're in another land, not realizing that God was going to take care of them anyway. And so he told her to lie. And he lied. And so already, God talks about bearing false witnesses. Now look what happens in Genesis chapter 20. Because of this line. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, dwell between Kadesh and Shur, and journeyed into Gerah. And Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, She's my sister! And Abimelech, came, the king, sent and took Sarah. Did he lie? Have truth, right? But it's still a lie. Now, pastor, don't go there. Be careful when you say half truths. Are you with me? Because half truths are still lies. But God said to Abimelech in a dream by night. So now God speaks to the king, and He said to him, "Behold, thou art a dead man." Now I don't know about you, but if God speaks to you in the middle of the night, He says, "Hey, you're dead." Is that going to wake you up? Yes or no? So he's awake now. And he says, for the woman which thou hast taken, she is another man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? 
Said she now to me, she is my sister? Lie. And she even herself said, he's my brother? Lie. And the integrity of my heart, the intimacy of my hands, have I done this? And the Lord spared his life. But you see right there? Did, was that a commandment? Yes. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Long before it was codified in the, in the, in the commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Right there, one of the commandments of God. And let's go to the seventh one. Verse 15. Genesis chapter 12, verse 15. And the Bible said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it is pleasing thee, and to Sarah, behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces. So behold, he is to uh, take a cover of his eyes, and to all that are with thee, with all dust that she has reported. Now, let me ask you a question. If the king would have touched her, would he have committed adultery? Yes. Why did Joseph run? When the wife said to Joseph, come to me. Did Joseph stay? Did he have a dialogue with the woman? No. Or did he run? See, Joseph understood, still in the book of Genesis, the commandments of God, thou shalt not commit adultery. Genesis 19 now. See, I'm going through this here intentionally so that no one can ever say to you that, that it, was at the, it was Moses, all this was done. It existed long before Moses came. Verse 15, uh, verse 15 here. And when the morning arose, that the angels hastened Lot. Now just so you know, God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but Lot was still there. Remember I mentioned to you last week that you could become a blessing to everyone around you. The reason why Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't destroyed was because Lot was still there. But once you remove Lot, the blessing is no longer there. Saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, least thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold of his hand and upon the hand of his wife. So one angel is grabbing Lot, one angel is grabbing the wife, and upon the hand of the two daughters, one angel is grabbing one daughter, the other one, the Lord being merciful unto them, and they brought them forth and sent them without the city. And it came to pass that as he brought them forth, that he said, escape for the night, but look not behind you. Neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountains, least not be consumed. And Lot said unto them, oh no, not so my Lord. So you gotta be careful when you covet. When you covet. Like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? When his wife was running, God protected them, and the fire came down. Did somebody look back? Last wife looked back. Here's why. Even though her heart, her face was this way, her heart was back there. And because she turned her back and looked and was covering all the things, the house and the clothes and the, and the chariots and the horses yes. and the shoes. I'm, I'm trying to model it that. She looked back. The Bible says she became a pillar of salt. Look at verse 24, 26, and 19. And the, and the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and fire from the Lord came out of heaven, and he overthrew the cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the city that which grew upon the rock. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And so, right here, we have an example of what happens when you covet. And so another commandment was broken. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, nor thy cover thy neighbor's wife, nor the man servant, maid servant, nor his ox, or donkey, or anything that is thy neighbor's. And you can cover anything today. Genesis 27. 
In Genesis 27, again, all this before the commandments are given. Genesis 27, the beginning of verse 34. And while Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said to his father, this is Esau and Isaac fighting about the inheritance. Verse 35, he said, that brother came with subtlety. In other words, he lied, craftsmanship and taken away the blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessings. And he has thou not reserved the blessing for me. You know the story? Thou shalt not steal. And so one of the craziest, heart-wrenching stories is one brother stole from his brother. And again, it's in the Old Testament before Moses, thou shalt not steal. So you see, all before, if people say, well, well, God did away with the laws of Moses, well then, fine, say that, but you cannot do away with all those commandments that existed before. Because they're all of the Ten Commandments anyway. Right? They broke the law. What does the Bible teach? In Genesis chapter 26, here it goes, this is the combination. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, and my statutes, and my laws. See, God blessed Abraham because he kept his commandments and his laws. Now, if all this started with Moses, what laws is he talking about? Are you with me? And all through Genesis, all ten commandments are laid right there. All through. It existed long before it was codified at Mount Sinai. Now, what about the laws of health? Did they not exist before there was a Jewish nation was established? Are these laws of health also abolished? I want to show you one text, just one text. Turn to Genesis chapter 7, and we're going even further back, Genesis chapter 7, and everyone knows the story of Noah, right? Most of us know it, right? I hope so. You know, in the ark, we build an ark and ask everyone to come into the ark, right? But I want you to see something that people neglect to see. This is thousands of years before Moses was even born. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come down into the house, into the ark, for, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now notice this, clean and unclean. Of every clean beast thou shalt take by thee by sevens. In other words, twos and sevens. Why? Because what happens if you cheat? Let's say you only, you only have two animals, and you one. What happens to that whole species? It's gone, right? Yes or no? Okay, gone. But clean by sevens, male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, why? Because they're not going to eat them. Of fowls also, just you know, every sacrifice is always a clean animal. Just you know. Every sacrifice is a clean animal. A fowl also the air by seven, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Now, if the health message did not exist until Moses, how in the world God has already differentiated between clean and unclean from the very ark? Are you with me? Long before Moses came into view, it was already understood clean and unclean. So again, if you want to say you did away with Moses, fine. But you cannot do away with what God told Noah. Amen. Yes or no? It's right. Is it in the Word of God? Yes. So, does the Bible teach that the end time church will be keeping the commandments of God? Now we know that the apostles kept it. We know that Jesus kept it. We know that afterwards they kept it. But what about just before Christ comes? Will God's end time church keep the commandments? Or, or are they done away with? Let the Bible speak, right? Because I don't want you to say, well, Pastor, I say, no, 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 no. The Word. So turn to Revelation 12. Because let's dive from Genesis all the way to the very end. Right? The very end, Revelation. And, all, and this is now doing with, with God's 
church, end time church, end time believers, end time movement. And verse 17. Now the dragon, you know already, it's, it's the devil. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and the woman is God's church, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keeps the what? That was a little bit. Keeps the what? The commandments of God, and has the testimony of who? Jesus Christ. So God's end time church keeps the commandments of God. Is it right there or not? Yes. I'm not saying this. It's right there. Well, Pastor, that's only one verse. It's only one text. Go to Revelation chapter 14. And look at verse 12. Okay, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. And if you look at 14, this is the Lamb and his company and, and, and God's end time movement before he comes again. And it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the what? The what? And have the faith of Jesus. So you see, Christ is always the center, always. But as Christians, we also keep all ten. Oh, excuse me, nine, right? We keep nine, right? No. Yeah. Seven? Yeah. When you say commandments, it always means ten, doesn't it? Yes. But Pastor, I don't like this one. So I'm not going to keep that one. That's not your choice. Right? You can't pick and choose. Here they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. So, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Towards the end there of the New Testament, just before you get to the book of Revelation, John is the same one that wrote the book of Revelation. And here's what John says, the same John, hereby we know that we, and that we know him. So in other words, I know Jesus Christ again is the center. Christ is the center of everything I believe, even the Ten Commandments. And hereby we know that we know him, Jesus, if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know, I know him, and keep it not his commandments. Woo! I don't say it, but the word says he's a liar. And the truth is not what? In him. See, in other words, if you're a Christian and you believe and you love Jesus Christ, you're going to do that which is going to honor him, praise him, glorify him, keep a connection with him. You cannot separate the two. And it says if you teach otherwise, you're a liar. I'm not saying this, but the word is saying it. And then in 1 John chapter 5, but this we know that we love the children, we love the children of God when we love God. His commandments for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. In other words, if I love God, I'm going to keep His commandments. If I love God, I'm going to keep His commandments. If I love God, I'm going to do what? One more time. If I love God, I'm going to do what? It's right there in the Word of God. If you love me, keep my So we're going to be doing the series on the book All Ten Commandments, but with a modern perspective of what the Bible actually teaches in the New Testament about borrowing these Ten Commandments. Because if you notice carefully the Beatitudes in many other places, Christ magnified the Ten Commandments. And so we're going to look at it in a modern contextualization of what Jesus wants for our lives. But you know me, I always make it a few. This Sabbath morning, we want to say, Lord, I love you. And even though sometimes I might not understand all the commandments, even though I might not fulfill it, even though I might not keep it, Lord, help me to follow them because I truly love you. Help me, Father, to keep those commandments. Because in so doing, it's a, it's a sign, it's a testimony that I truly love you. If I follow your voice for my life, this morning, if you want to say, Lord, I want to follow your voice for my life, and I want to keep everything that you put in the Word of God for me to follow, it's not only just the Ten Commandments, it's many other things. 
But if you want to say this morning, Lord, give me the power and the strength to follow you, your word. I want you to stand up for Christ today. Let's pray. Dear Father, there's a lot of voices out there telling us not to follow you. A lot of voices out there saying that we don't need to keep your holy commandments. A lot of voices out there saying that they were done away with yet. We see them in the old before and even in the end time church that your people not only love you, but they also keep your commandments. Dear Lord, help us to be your children, your people that reflect you and your character. And Father, if we need strength to follow these commandments, we know that only through you, only through you, only through you, can we keep these. Bless your people now, Father. Bless Sandpoint. Point. And when we leave your church, let people see Jesus. And then we follow Jesus. Let them see God's beautiful character through us. We now ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.